At this very moment, you may be carrying generational trauma and not even know it. Your behaviors, habits, and life experiences can be heavily affected by generational trauma, and the sooner you know about it, the faster you can break free. In this video, you'll learn what generational trauma is on a spiritual level, and this may surprise you. Then we'll go into why it's a problem for us all, then how to spot generational trauma in yourself, and finally, I'm going to share a three-step process to help you clear generational trauma quickly. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the heart alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, where I share weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. And before we get into the video, I also wanted to let you know that we have a free workbook as a supplemental resource for this video. It has some key takeaways and homework questions that'll help you go deeper on the content that we discussed today. I'll leave links for that workbook in the description box below so you can download after watching this video. On to part one of the video, what's generational trauma? So the term generational trauma, I prefer to use the term ancestral trauma. It's really the same thing. These are, these are two synonyms. Generational or ancestral trauma is just stuff that we carry from the past, but I want to give you a couple of different definitions. Uh, I'm going to give you first a mainstream definition, then we're going to go into a more spiritual definition, all right? So the mainstream definition of generational trauma is traumatic event or events that happened in past generations, but that still heavily affect the current generation, okay? So the mainstream definition of generational trauma refers more to, they talk a lot about how generational trauma is passed on, but the emphasis really on uh, in the mainstream is, um, the emphasis is more on behaviors, okay? So generational trauma is passed on from generation to generation, mostly because, according to the mainstream, mostly because of behaviors that are passed on and then mirrored uh, from generation um, to generation. And this is absolutely true that, that trauma can be passed on through mirroring and through repetition of behaviors, no question whatsoever. But there's also a spiritual aspect to this that I really want to talk about because the deeper we go into the energy understanding of what happens with ancestral trauma, that's how you really clear it. Because I can't tell you how many people that have reached me and that I've worked with over the years who've had a lot of difficulty clearing ancestral trauma, and it's mostly because they've just stayed with the behavioral part of it. So they've tried to correct just the behavior uh, part of the trauma, and they didn't go down into the energy aspect of it. They didn't clear the energy. And so it's really hard for you to heal ancestral trauma if you don't, um, if you don't address the spiritual and energy component to it. Okay. That's really important. So, but first I wanted to give you this mainstream definition that's more focused on behaviors. And now let's get into the spiritual definition of what ancestral trauma is. So ancestral trauma pertains to past painful experiences and wounds that have been programmed into the first chakra and passed on to future generations. Okay, so this is more of an of a spiritual and energy definition of what ancestral trauma is. And you'll notice there is a particular focus on the first chakra of your of your chakra system. Okay. Now, if you don't know what chakras are, here's a picture of them. So these are the seven main chakras of the system. There are many more, but the seven main ones are the ones that are discussed the most. The first chakra is this red one down here, the lower, the first foundational, it's called the root chakra. This is the first one to come online when you're still a, a fetus in your mother's womb, okay? This chakra is the one that is very, very heavily involved in ancestral trauma. Now, if you'll notice in that definition, I'm saying that this chakra is actually programmed with the ancestral trauma. So let me get into what that means a little bit. So when I say that a chakra is programmed, you have to remember that chakras are energy centers. They're energy centers that circulate energy in and out of the body. And mostly chakras are discussed as energy centers that move energy. And that's true. A chakra does do that. But what's less talked about um, when it has to do with chakras is that Chakras also store information very much like a computer does, okay? So you can think of a chakra like a mini computer. 
the ancestral trauma is housed in a chakra and you can think of it like a chip, like a computer chip. It's programmed into that chakra just like a computer chip programs a computer, okay? And so this is an important aspect because now you start to understand that this chip, this ancestral trauma chip is lodged in the first chakra. So now you can see it doesn't matter if you try and change behaviors. If the wounding, if the root wounding is in that first chakra, you have to address the energy wounding and you have to address that energy chip in the first chakra in order to have really profound healing happen in your life. Now, you may be asking why the first chakra? Why am I specifically targeting the first chakra as being the source of the energy storage of ancestral trauma? And what's happening here is that the first chakra, this is where the primary problem is when it has to do with ancestral trauma, because your first chakra is really considered your tribal chakra or the, the group chakra. This is the chakra. It's the first one that comes online. It's the first one that's programmed when you're within a group, whatever group that is, whether it's a biological family, the people that raise you, this is the group chakra. This chakra contains all information having to do with families, with tribes, with cultures, with any group that I belong to. Any group that I belong to, that information is programmed into the first chakra. So when it comes to ancestral trauma, because this is stuff that's coming from past generations and moving forward, it's going to be encoded in this first chakra primarily. It's not the only one. I'm going to talk about a couple of other issues going on, but the central issue energetically going on when it has to do with generational or ancestral trauma is the encoding of this trauma in the first chakra. Your first chakra is that chakra that it's not, it's also the chakra that is, that's um, the chakra of safety and survival. It's your more, more basic chakra. It's the chakra that's the foundation of the whole system. It's the first one to come online, but it's also the foundation. All other chakras develop based on that, on that foundation. So this, this chakra not only has other key functions, like this is the chakra of survival and safety, but for the purposes of this video, this is also the chakra of tribe, of family, of groups, any group that we belong to. And so that's where that original chip of ancestral trauma, it's passed down and stored in that first chakra. Now, the first, all chakras, but just talking about this chakra specifically, this first chakra stores ancestral trauma in much the same way as uh, some biological diseases can be passed on from generation to generation. So there are some diseases that we can actually pass on uh, to our children and so forth. And, and so biologically, we know that we could pass energy forward, but the same thing happens energetically. We can pass not just diseases, but we can pass wounds, we can pass trauma, we can pass all, all kinds of, of painful experiences from the past into future generations. And this is exactly where it's going. The, the, the wounding here in the first chakra, that computer chip, that little energy chip of ancestral trauma is programmed right here in this first chakra. This is the source of where that ancestral trauma is housed and carries forward from generation to generation. Okay, so now that we've talked about the first chakra and the little ancestral trauma computer chip that's installed there, now let's get into some secondary issues that go on with ancestral trauma too. The foundation, and this is what I want you to remember, is that the foundation is always this first chakra. So you have to go down to the first chakra when you're trying to heal ancestral trauma, otherwise you won't be able to get to the root of it. But now let's go up a little bit in the system because there are two other chakras that are, that are also affected by ancestral trauma. And they're affected mostly because they're in very close proximity to the first one and they get a lot of their programming and a lot of their information from the first chakra. So the way that the chakras develop is they develop one at a time, always based on the information of the chakra below. So the first chakra is formed. By the time the second chakra comes online, it's going to be programmed a lot with the information that it's getting from the first one and so forth. It keeps creating this cascading effect up the system. Each chakra will, they'll, um, it'll interpret information from the chakra before and it'll form its own energy center around that interpretation. So the other two chakras that are affected by ancestral trauma are the second chakra and the third chakra. All right, so let's talk about these two. The second chakra, very close proximity to the first one, it's, the, it's our, uh, our sexual chakra or the sacral chakra. 
this chakra is responsible not just for sexual energy. So a lot of people talk about the second chakra as being the, the center for sexual energy, and that is true. Uh, the second chakra does have this function also. But for the purposes of what we're talking about in this video here, there's another aspect of the second chakra that, that comes in handy here and that's very related to ancestral trauma. And it's the function of this chakra is also about bonding with others. Okay, this is crucial to remember. The second chakra is the chakra of bonding. You bond a lot with others through this second chakra. The first chakra is more diffuse in its energy, so it's more about the energy of the group. But then when I go up to the second chakra, now I'm learning to bond one-on-one -on -one with people, all right? This bonding aspect of the second chakra also means that it's going to be receiving the, a little bit of energy from the ancestral trauma in the first chakra. It's going to be receiving a little bit of that energy and it's going to become dysfunctional or imbalanced because of that information. So a lot of times what happens is people who have ancestral trauma very frequently also have problems relating or bonding with other people. Okay, so remember this because we're gonna talk about this later on in the video where I'm gonna show you how to spot ancestral trauma in yourself. And now you're starting to understand kind of some of the things that could happen to you if you do have ancestral trauma. One of the issues is in this second chakra, you'll have issues bonding with other people, okay? So this is one chakra that's also affected by ancestral trauma. And then we move up to the third chakra. This is the solar plexus. This chakra is a very powerful chakra that's responsible for your personal identity, also for your personal will and sovereignty. This is your, this is your main chakra of, of being an individual, of being an independent, autonomous individual, uh, uh, separate from the world, okay? That's the responsibility of this third chakra. The third chakra uh, having to do uh, with ancestral trauma, the third chakra is where your personal identity is born. So think about this. If you have ancestral trauma and it's bleeding up from the first, second, and then it gets to the third, the third chakra will literally develop a personal identity, meaning a personal identity with behaviors, habits, personality quirks. It'll build this personal identity based on the information of ancestral trauma, and it'll create an identity around that, a personal identity around that. Okay, so these three chakras, these three main chakras that I'm talking about here are the ones that are most affected by, by, um, by ancestral trauma, especially the first one, that's the one that's most affected, then the second chakra is the second most affected, and then the third chakra is the third most affected, okay? But I wanted to talk about these three chakras because all three of them have a little bit of influence of ancestral trauma, and it's good for you to know because then later on, you know that you're going to need to work through all three of them. Now, you may be asking yourself, why is ancestral trauma such a problem? You know, these things happened in the past. Maybe they didn't happen to me. Maybe they happened way back in my lineage. Why should I even care? Okay, so let's get into why ancestral trauma is such a problem, even for you, even if you didn't have any trauma as a child. It's ancestral trauma that you may be carrying from past generations is still heavily affecting you, and for two main reasons, okay? The first one is the personal reason, all right? So uh, ancestral trauma affects you personally because the likelihood that you're going to repeat behaviors and traumatic experiences that you've inherited and that have been programmed in your first, in your first chakra is pretty high. So for example, let me give you a down to earth example. Um, statistically, the children of alcoholics uh, will have the likelihood of also being alcoholics when they grow up, okay? So this is just a common example. Um, a, a person who grows up with a lot of turmoil in their family will also grow up then having a lot of turmoil in their own personal relationships because they're mirroring that behavior from, from childhood, okay? And their parents were mirroring the behavior of their grandparents and so forth, all right? So this is just, these are just a few ex uh, examples of how ancestral trauma can personally affect you, your behaviors, how you see the world and how you relate to the world. So that's one aspect. Another aspect that's less talked about, probably because it's a little bit more spiritual, 
is the collective aspect of, of, um, of ancestral trauma, all right? And this is the energy that is collected and amplified when a bunch of people have the same trauma. So when a bunch of people have the same trauma, when I have generation after generation after generation with the same type of trauma, that energy carries forward and it doesn't just carry forward in individuals, it then starts to carry forward in a collective, in what's known as a collective, meaning a group of people. And it could go even further, not just a group of people, but the more powerful the energy is within a group of people, it could, that energy can then be anchored into the earth, into an actual physical location. And let me give you a down to earth example of this. So I don't know if you have ever, well, you've heard of it, but if, if you have visited uh, Auschwitz, uh, Birkenau in, 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 um, in Poland, okay? So Auschwitz, there's, there's a couple of camps, uh, Auschwitz and Birkenau. If you go to these two camps in Poland, if you're physically there, I have been physically there, and just being on the land, you can sense the energy, a tremendous energy, karmic energy and collective energy of pain and suffering is still on that land because of what happened and because of the Holocaust, all right? So that's the land aspect. And I've been personally there and I could feel the energy by just being in that physical location. But now if you also look at generation after generation of Holocaust survivors, you'll see that the atrocities of, of those collective experiences have been passed on to generation after generation, even, even uh, into generations where they didn't suffer any trauma personally, but they're still carrying the trauma of the Holocaust from their grandparents, great grandparents, and so forth. Okay. And so this is an example of how ancestral trauma can collectively weigh us down. And it has to be cleared not only from the collective, but it has to be cleared from the land also as the example that I gave here. All right. So meaning that in this example, the land in Poland has to be heavily cleared and we're still doing clearing work in that geographic location to lift that collective energy and be able to clear that ancestral trauma from the planet altogether. OK, so this is just another example of how ancestral trauma affects us, not just personally, it can affect uh, groups that we belong to and it can actually affect the land that we live on. All right. So these are a couple of reasons why both collectively and personally personally, why ancestral trauma is such a problem and why it needs to be cleared and the clearing work needs to be done by us all. We all have the responsibility to do that, not just for ourselves, but for our families and for all of the people, for the collective on earth, especially in places and geographic locations where the collective pain is very, very heavy. On to part two of the video, how to spot ancestral trauma in yourself. All right. So I'm going to give you some easy ways to spot it in yourself. The first one being uh, repeating patterns. Okay, this is, this is probably the, easy, the easiest way for you to spot ancestral trauma in yourself is if you look back and you notice yourself repeating the same patterns or behaviors that your parents did before you or your, or your grandparents before you and so on and so forth, okay? So using the example of the person who has an alcoholic father or mother or anyone who raised them really, it doesn't have to be biological parents, but but for, for this example, we were using the example of someone who had a parent who was an alcoholic and then they became an alcoholic, okay? It's clear that if you become an alcoholic with a history, a family history of alcoholism, it's clear that you're carrying ancestral trauma pertaining to, to alcoholism, okay? So, so that's one way to, to see it, is repeating, notice the patterns that you have in yourself, the, the painful patterns, the things that you repeat, the behaviors that aren't good for you or that are painful for you that you repeat. It doesn't have to be alcoholism or substance abuse. It could be other things. For instance, in my own in my own family line on both mother and father's side, there's a lot of heart blockages. I've had to work through a lot of heart blockages on both my father and mother lines. So multiple generations of people super, super blocked in their heart, not knowing how to show love or how to be affectionate, how to really show unconditional love. And that was passed on to me. And I noticed these patterns in myself and then I could start observing them in my family. And I started to do the healing from there. I understood that there was a very strong ancestral 
component to this heart blockage, okay? And so this is just another example, but the point here is that you start to notice that you're repeating certain behaviors or patterns that the people before you, the generations before you and your family have done, okay? That's an easy way to start spotting ancestral trauma. The second way to spot ancestral trauma is through difficulty in bonding, okay? And so remember, this is because of the second chakra. So the second chakra is a little bit involved with ancestral trauma, and that's the chakra of bonding. So if you have difficulty relating and bonding with other people, this is this is not just um, not just romantic relationships. It could be relating and bonding with, with pretty much everyone, but you can really catch it if you have issues bonding with romantic relationships. That's, that's a, a good test. Because if there's a dysfunction in this second chakra, romantic relationships are going to be hard for you. You're going to have issues bonding. You're either going to you're either going to become really attached or clinging, or you're going to become detached and reject very easily and just want superficial relationships. But there's going to be a dysfunction in this second chakra. So if you find that you have difficulties relating and bonding with other people, this dysfunction can also be showing uh, ancestral trauma. The third way is awareness of the past. Okay, so this is this is also an easy, well, it's an easy way if you know a lot about your past generations, but this is an easy way to spot gen uh, ancestral trauma or generational trauma in yourself is to ask, is to do a review, to actually dig into your past generations. So maybe ask your parents questions or the people that raised you, ask them questions, um, ask questions about great grandparents or grandparents, go back in your family line um, to see if the if there are things that are being passed on in generation to generation and then write them down journal about them write down in details because if you write these things down in details you'll know the more details you have about the particularities of the ancestral trauma that's been passed down uh, from line to line the more that you know about it the more easily you can um, you can uh, really heal it now the important side note I want to leave here is that, Ancestral trauma, if, you, if you're not raised by a biological family that you're related to, if you're not raised by it, you, what you're going to want to do is your, your homework is going to be a little bit more tedious because you're going to have to pick apart the behaviors and patterns that you've mirrored, simply mirrored from the, the family that raised you, but it's not your biological family. You're going to have to pick those patterns apart, and you're going to have to find the patterns in the biological line if you can. Some people can do this. Some people, when they're adopted or raised by, uh, by other families, they know a little bit about their biological family and they can go into the healing there. If you cannot access your biological family, don't worry because you can still access ancestral trauma just through you. You don't have to review your, your biological line. But if you can, if you weren't raised by biological family and if you can access the history of your biological family, that'll be a great way also to go a little bit deeper on the ancestral trauma that you have have to heal. The fourth way to discover the particularities about your ancestral trauma is to look into your childhood, okay? Now, this one here is you're going to literally, this, this one is about the mirroring effect, really. So this is about the mirroring aspect because the likelihood that you're going to mirror patterns and behaviors from an ancestral uh, trauma past is going to be pretty high. So look into your childhood, see how you were raised, how your parents raised you, how, how, what kind of habits and behaviors they had between them and relating to you. Start taking notes of how you were raised and the issues that were, go that were coming up during your childhood with, with your, your biological family, okay? So if you go into that, you're going to be able to also get more particularities about the, the, the ancestral trauma that you have within you. And it's a lot about the mirroring of patterns, right? If your parents did something, the likelihood that they were mirroring their, par their parents is pretty high. So you can start to catch the mirroring of behaviors. And once you catch that, not just in yourself, but in the generations before, you'll have a lot more details about the ancestral wounding that's going on there, and you'll be able to heal it fast. On to part three of the video, how to clear ancestral or generational trauma. All right, so I'm going to share a really simple three-step process to help you uh, to help you do this. Uh, remember to follow these steps in order, okay? So starting with the first and then ending with the third because there's a specific order to this that makes the healing a lot easier, all right? So step one of the process is becoming aware, okay? So awareness, conscious awareness is so important in any kind of healing, 
um, but it's particularly important when it has to do with ancestral trauma because the moment that I become aware of the particularities of the programming that I carry, that, that ancestral trauma starts to lose its grip on me, okay? Ancestral trauma, any kind of chip, any kind of programming chip in your chakras, it's, they start to lose power the more aware I am, the more conscious I am. When I'm unconscious and unaware, that's when the computer chips, the energy chips in our chakras sort of take over and they kind of take control of our energy system. But the moment that I become aware, I can start disintegrating those, those chips and I could reprogram my chakras by the power of my awareness, okay? So becoming aware is really important. And you can become aware with some of the some of the techniques that I showed you before in this video, just learning about the particularities of the trauma in the past, learning about your own behaviors, how you were raised. Take all of these things together and just start to become more and more aware of the particularities of the ancestral trauma that you carry. The more aware you are, immediately just the light of your awareness will already start to dissolve the ancestral trauma chips that you have housed in that first chakra. Step number two is to use a clearing ceremony. I love to use ceremony to heal ancestral trauma. Love it, love it, love it. It's very, very powerful. It works really well. And what I'm talking about in terms of a healing ceremony, um, let me give you some details on how you would do this. So I love to do these healing ceremonies at night. Okay, so at night, you can just set out some candles, you can burn some incense or Palo Santo, you can prepare a space and have the intention of that ceremony being for the purpose of clearing ancestral trauma. So you make this beautiful ceremony. It could be elaborate or it could be simple. You can have flowers, you can have pictures of gurus, you can have whatever you want. It could be very elaborate or it could be simple. That's fine. The, the point here is that you're creating a space. That's what ceremony does. Ceremony creates a space for healing. And so the moment that you open that ceremony space, you're going to be really amplifying the energy and making the healing a lot easier for you, okay? Now, what you're gonna do here is it, the particularly important aspect of, of a healing ceremony for ancestral trauma is that you're going to call upon your ancestors that are not living anymore, okay? but you're going to be calling upon what I call elevated ancestors or ancestors of the light, all right? Not all of our ancestors are of the light. <laughs> and so you're gonna be calling to you elevated ancestors, ancestors that resonate with the light. You're gonna be calling those to you because those are the ancestors that are going to be willing to clear traumatic uh, uh, ancestral energy from your line and they're, they're gonna help you and they're very powerful at doing this. So you wanna start calling those ancestors to to you, call your ancestors to you that vibrate in the light, bring as many of them to you, and you can you can just call them by the by the power of your intention. You can say it out loud or you just in your mind, but you're calling them forth by the power of your intention as you're doing the ceremony. You can have some music going, you can have some drums. I love to work with drums. Drums are a great way. So sometimes when I'm invoking ancestors, I'll be drumming as I'm invoking my elevated ancestors and calling them forward. Okay. So you can have a drumming track or you can drum yourself and you're going to start to prepare this area to bring in those elevated ancestors that will help amplify the energy so that the clearing becomes a, a lot, a lot more powerful. And then I like to use a prayer and you can write your own prayer, but I'm also going to share a prayer with you here on, on how to do this healing ceremony. You can use this one or you can make up your own, but I wanted to share one with you so you'd have an example. Okay. So here's what the prayer looks like when I'm doing an ancestral energy clearing. So I'll say, I lovingly call on my ancestors of the light to help me clear any ancestral trauma in my mother and father lines in all directions of time, and so it is, okay? And I'll keep repeating this prayer over and over and over. Um, you, can add, you can also add an extra, here's a pro tip to, to help you clear, is you can use your hands and you could put your hands on these lower chakras, especially in the first chakra. You can hold your hand down in the first chakra as you're invoking your light ancestors and you're asking them to help you clear this ancestral energy in all directions of time. You can have your hands on your first chakra and you can actually visualize that first chakra lighting up if you have really good visualization skills, all right? If you have a developed third eye and you can see uh, 
this energy moving, you can add that uh, um, uh, advanced uh, kind of technique there too. If you don't have great visualization skills, that's okay. You can just invoke, keep invoking your light ancestors, keep repeating the prayer over and over and over, and this is going to help. They're going to help you clear this trauma in all directions of time through your mother and father lines. It's important for you to specify both lines because they both need to be cleared in all directions of time. Now, once I repeat this invocation in this prayer multiple times, and I feel like the energy is starting to lift, I always like to finish this ancestral energy clearing. I like to finish it with an added, uh, an added step here, an added exercise to this, to this ceremony. And that is, I'll just stand there and I will visualize light coming from me and going into my mother and father lines all the way back, all the way back, all the way back until the beginning of time. Okay. And I'll literally send that light. All right. And you can do this also with the mantra. So I'll, I'll sometimes I'll put my hand on my heart so I can invoke love and light and I'll start to visualize energy coming in. I'll see my mom in front of me, my dad in front of me, and I'll start sending light down the lines. Okay. And I'll say something like I send light into my father line. I send light into my mother line and I'll just keep repeating this. And then I'll just finish with, you know, it is done something like that. Close off us. You always want to close out a ceremony with something like this. Like, and so it is, you can say, amen. You can say it's done something like that, but you're going to close it this way, visualizing that light, just going down your family line until the beginning of time. And that'll help clear, really reinforce the clearing of the ancestral trauma. Step number three now is balancing your chakras. So this makes sense now, right? So there's something that you have to remember about the chakras, and that is that chakras function very much like computers sometimes. So we've just removed the chip of ancestral trauma. Now we've got to program those chakras with something else, okay? So you have to remember this about your chakras. So once you do a clearing, once you do this type of healing, and now you've literally extracted that chip of ancestral trauma, and that's been removed, especially from this first chakra, now it's time to balance the chakras so that they they kind of return to a normal state and a healthy, vibrant state. So we're specifically going to be balancing first, second, and third chakras, all right? You can focus on other ones if you want, but we're specifically targeting these. The balancing is really important because this is really what's going to finish off the healing and make the healing long lasting. All right. Now I'm not going to get into exactly how to do all of this balancing because I shot an entire video on how to balance the seven main chakras uh, of, of the body. I'm going to leave links in the description box below so you can watch that video and pr pay particular attention when you're watching that video, pay particular attention to first, second, and third chakras, because those are the ones you're going to want to balance and recalibrate after this clearing ceremony. And to finish off the balancing of the chakras to help you even more to kind of really ground this healing. Um, I'll also leave, um, I have a free meditation uh, for the first chakra. It's called First Chakra Healing. It's a free meditation that you can download and you can work with that meditation to also help heal that first chakra after doing this, this ancestral trauma healing ceremony. I'll leave a link in the description box below to my free resources page. You can scroll through that free resources page. There are a bunch of meditations there. Download this, this uh, first uh, chakra healing meditation and work with that after you do your clearing ceremony. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, are you aware of any ancestral trauma in your family lines? I want to hear all about it, what it is in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget the videos that I mentioned in this one. That'll be great for you to continue viewing. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.